Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. And today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. And we're going to be starting, hopefully this will be the first video in a series of um, our, our first few Let's Plays of Call of War as Gunslinger. So this will be uploaded when we're away um, in an effort to make the two weeks while we're away hopefully a little more interesting for our viewers than, than the average weeks while we're here. Um, so we're going to be playing through it. Uh, this is not fresh. Uh, I have beaten the game on uh, normal and hard, and I'm going to be playing through it again on hard. And I have never played this game, and I've seen a couple scenes before, but this will be the first time that I'm actually following along on a playthrough. Yeah, so we're also going to hopefully have some story elements to it. Uh, so for people who haven't played it already, you can experience the story. Uh, and then also hopefully gameplay elements, so you'll be able to get a good idea of what the game's all about. Kansas 1910, how Oh, groceries and boots, you like that? That's what you get. It's, it's a groceries and boots store. You know what this reminds me of? Right, so it's, 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 it reminds me very much of uh, Tim Truman, probably because, I, I don't know if you know, Tim Truman was the guy who did Scout, and he did a lot of, um, don't I know you, sort sir? of... Don't believe so. He did a bunch of covers years. for the original Name wild card series Greaves. that George R. R. Martin did. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? He used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Old Joel Lansdale books too. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm, I'm Molly. Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? I is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. Uh, it was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. So this is like those Kid had comic a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. Yeah, because Joe Lansdale did a bunch of uh, westerns too that with Tim Truman doing the covers. Very much reminds me of that style. Ooh, nice. Okay. So it's, it's definitely got a, a real kind of aesthetic, right? That oversaturated um, desert. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. Yeah, the game has pretty good graphics, but one of the things I that it does with the kid because really the well is the aesthetic. Sean was riding with Billy's enemies. Yeah, are you, before um, I tell you why I want that some bitch. This reminds me of uh let me tell you, yeah, you probably never saw the movie Three Kings where they did to it totally oversaturated the whole time to really give you a sense of, you know, funny really feeling. bright, a lot of funny, sun. Ha -ha. No hot, Steve, dry. The other kind of funny. So, one of the things that's really good about this game is the sense of storytelling, uh, they riff a lot off of the fact that this is a guy telling a story in a bar. Right, and you lose a little bit of the suspense, because you know, no then you know how it ends, right? It ends a certain way. Even if you can't make it, you have to play it until you get it the same way, right? Yeah. And so you can see, there's a lot of really cool, bright colors. It's really nice. I heard the shots, and I knew I had to move fast. So the one thing that's going to be different, other than... Sorry, I'll let this play out. The one other thing that's going to be different, other than uh, my skill level, is going to be I already have four skill points available, you can see here, um, because collecting nuggets of truth, collecting the secrets in the game, right. gives you permanent XP. So I'm going to take a moment here just to get some upgrades. So what are those? Those are. Uh, this is for long distance sharpshooting. Okay. So Eagle's Eye basically means that whenever I aim, I get a really short amount of time for slow motion. This one's going to give me some more ammo. Uh, this one is going to let me reload my rifle very, very fast, 50% faster, and just for the, this one is going to let me, uh, 
dual wield, so I'm going to be able to carry two pistols akimbo style. Oh, nice. Uh, but it's not as effective most of the time. So... I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. One of the things that's really cool, that you'll have been able to see a little bit already of, um, of is Mexico, right when you shoot somebody, yeah. you can see that the spatter of blood, and they oh, and it's, no, no, <laughs> okay, oh, uh, there we go, already dead the first time, uh, too busy trying to, trying to talk about stuff. I am dead. Uh, so, here, I'll try to show it off right here. You shoot somebody, right? Oh, no. That spatter of blood, yeah. and then they hang in the air for a second. That's really just a. That's totally John Woo kind of. Oops. Balletic violence, where. I mean, John Woo was the director that was known for those. Um, that, that, that style of. You know, when it got really violent, it was almost like a dance in slow motion. And another cool thing is when you when you get shot, your screen cracks like like it's it's glass being shot. Now that crack disappears, so it doesn't accumulate damage like that. You don't get to see. Uh, as long as you have the crack, it means that you have that damage. Um, and then as it disappears, it means you're healing back the damage, so you take damage over time. Uh, and as you can see, when you die, you actually until the checkpoint, you lose all the upgrades you've bought so i'm gonna be buying these probably you don't lose your points for buying them. you don't lose your points but you lose the the upgrades so you still have one more point oh yeah true sorry one second um and then this one is gonna let your combos last for twice as long so when you string together your kills of people you get a lot more points which is how I you knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery so i decided to get sneaky so i think you were explaining to me before this is not exactly a first person view. There's a specific sub type, right? The subcategory is gun rails. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So there's uh, most of the time for a first person shooter in any single player game. One of them reached the water tower. Whoa! It's pretty much on rails. Okay, that's a really cool thing. It's called Sense of Death. You see in the top right corner, uh, that dice and skull. Um, when it fills up once per time, you would die. Um, when you get shot, you have the chance to dodge the bullet by hitting either A or D, and you can dodge around the bullet. Uh, so it's a way of getting a little bit of extra health and making yourself seem like a total Luckily, badass. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. Yeah, the I heard that the Wachowskis is very important. were inspired a little bit by John Woo and the Matrix. Top. It's kind of funny oh, that, you do, do you? That, that, that was actually quite beautiful. Indeed, darling. Yeah, the whole... Well, where was I? Oh, yeah. So are there any people that you're not supposed to shoot? Like basically, when you're playing this, if you see something move, it's okay to shoot it. Pretty much, and even some of the stuff that doesn't move, uh, you can get points for, like explosive barrels and stuff. But there are people who are on your team, or who you're not supposed to shoot, you'll you'll see them in just a second. Oh, like civilians. Well, no, uh, other outlaws, right? Oh. This is when you're rolling with Billy the Kid, is what he was talking about, if you're paying any right. attention to the story. Right. So, uh, then, Billy the Kid just told you to- I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We'll cover you! Right there. So that's Billy the Kid. Truth be told, oh, okay. things weren't much better Uh, so here. You see that? You can shoot the gunpowder. So you'll have noticed one time, everything went gray, and yeah. people went red. This is called concentration mode. Um, it's the top, uh, but left. You see the, the, the gun. Right, that red? Yeah, you, you fill it up by killing people. And then you they press Q, and you can skill, see exactly where people are. Uh -oh. behind you? Getting a little bit cocky. It was a bit of a slog, but oh, I finally fought my way around the back of the house. Yeah. So this game is and just like really, that, really great artistically. You see, when it shows up green, it means that this I guy's a friend. And upstairs, I found Billy days. and Charlie Bouldry. So this is, is Billy the Kid the one guy where there's only ever one known picture of him that they Billy don't looked absolutely at me and Billy said, the Kid? About I think time, that's... amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! <laughs> Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by oh. dozens of deputies. You know those shooting galleries? Yeah, bears home. like the C&E? This reminds you of exactly... Now, was that... Those barrels, none of those are powder? 
No, the red barrels are explosive. The oh, okay. non-red ones are not explosive. So none of them are close enough to make it worse. Oh, those red barrels are explosive, oh, actually. Those ones right there. Yeah. Like flies, but they just kept on coming. Were they close enough to make it worthwhile? Uh, no, no one else is close enough. I just shot it. You get some points for shooting it anyways. Uh, one other thing that you can do right here. You see those pumpkins? Yeah. I just got five points for shooting That's the pumpkin. Is that worth uh, blowing your bullets? Oh, not at all. But you, you don't run out of bullets most of the time. Ooh, was that a boiler you got? That, that... Well, uh, no, an explosive barrel. Okay. So as you can see, the more people you shoot, you get more and more points, so you can rack up combos. And that's one of the the main focuses of this game. You get more XP, you feel cooler. Something coming around to, back there. There we go. What's funny is in a game like this, it doesn't make any pretense, right? Injustice, you're not killing them, you're just knocking them out. Oh yeah, this one is totally Wild West. So, a lot of the focuses of this game are making you feel really cool. Um, making everything just really fast-paced fun. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them around back. I'll draw their attention. Oh, you're almost fully loaded on concentration. He directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do? So that's a breach and enter right there. Many would have fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men had. But, all right, so like we were Jack, recently talking about her story. What's funny is, man, Jack, you need to joshing. feel like you've got a little bit yeah, of freedom, but really when be. you're saying it's on Mr. rails, Graves, you don't have a lot of options. You just have to play please, through certain setups, right? And yeah. her story now, plays to we'll that, where you don't have a lot of control, but it's actually right. built into the story. Yeah, and sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. That moment where you get that uh, circling red reticle, yeah. you, all you have to do is click, and you automatically headshot, and it moves from one to the next. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't even really have to do anything. It's just entirely like a scripted sequence to make you feel cool about yourself. Yeah, but this this game does it too, as far as making you feel like, because it's a story being told in retrospect. How did you get for the chickens? Ten. But there's a oh, little so there's a little line about having fried chicken because you know if you kill one, and I find that really entertaining. So it's better than pumpkins. Yeah, and but that's when I met you know Sheriff Pat Garrett, I read that you went toe to toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked on tin star. I really love these intro sequences too, when they introduce the new characters, these are really just well done. Oh cool. Now is Pat Garrett a real person? Yeah, pretty much everybody in this is a real person except for you. So except for Silas, Silas Greaves. Greaves. Okay. You read that in a dime novel? Okay, and showdowns are really interesting too. No fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. Like a rattlesnake. This is one of the variations of boss fights that they have in the game. So you hit A and D to move your hand right over your holster, and then you use your mouse to keep their head or body in your sights like this. So um, they introduce elements one bit at a time. So right now I can't move, use A and D to put my hand over my holster to draw faster, but it's a it's a multitasking mini game, right? Uh, where you have to try you to draw focus. The best is a headshot. And so that one, I was, a, I was a little too slow. So you hear a heartbeat for a couple seconds, and um, you wait until his hand goes for his gun, and then you click, and then well, try to shoot him as fast as possible. Because uh, so, one of you is going to go first, yeah, right? Yeah, as, as soon as you hear the heartbeat, you actually can draw early. It's, it's good that you mentioned that, but it's a dishonorable kill, so you don't get any experience for it, and oh. history remembers Who's you as a there? coward. History is written by the survivors or the winners, but but that that's what it says. Oh oh, I, I was I was not paying attention. We were and that you talking in a fair fight. But there we go. <laughs> is that what that penny dreadful said? No, boy, that ain't what oh, I meant him, when I said I met Pat Garrett. Yeah. So this is so one of the moments. Again. I finally reached those damn stables. Where it plays with the fact that you're telling a story, right? 
right. somebody tells you how they heard it went down. Right. And you play it like that's true. Until he tells um the the Silas Grease, the right? Inside and bam. So you're not actually playing what happened. Garrett's voice. Right, you're just it's not visually we're just seeing what's being narrated, whether it happened or not. Yeah. And boy, that was just the beginning. So that was the first level. I think that's a great place to end off. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that we'll be able to continue filming these videos. So if you like watching this, or if you like these videos, watch it. And if you don't like this video, stop watching right now. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Komoda. Komoda.